worship online, you can find an order of worship in this morning's service on our church website. We have some announcements. Does anybody have any announcements before we announce the church ones? Go right ahead, Scott. Good morning, everyone, and good morning to those who are watching online. Uh, it's a pleasure to welcome you to worship on the third Sunday of Advent. Um, I just want to uh, draw your attention to a couple of announcements in the uh, bulletin, um, the, uh, particularly the announcement about the gifts for, that we are offering through Covenant to Care from the Angel Tree. <coughs> Those are all due in the church um, on December the 15th so that they can be prepared and ready for delivery by the social workers. So if you took one of those tags from the angel tree, you want to bring those in. Um, I'm not aware whether there's a possibility for people to make a contribution um, beyond if you, if you didn't get a tag, but um, uh, I think Kathy Harple would be the person to check with about that. So I'll try to find out so we can put that information into our um, uh on our website so that you know about it. Also, I want to just mention that um, we, as is our custom, we have a special collection for special music, um, which we are excited to be um, preparing for for Christmas, and also a collection for the flowers, which will decorate the sanctuary. For the first time this year, again, in a, in a couple of years, we're hoping to be able to distribute some of those flowers to uh, homebound or bereaved members of the congregation. So we invite your contributions, as you'll see in the order of worship. Um, contributions in excess of the cost of the flowers are used for urgent uh, community needs. And since we're in the midst of our Christmas food drive, um, it uh, sort of fits with the, where we're putting our attention. Um, there's a great need within the community for food and for help with energy costs, as you might imagine. Uh, the multi-church youth group is going to meet this afternoon at Springland Church um, at 4 p.m. Uh, for an improv night, and the confirmation class will meet uh, following the close of the service. We'll be starting right around um, 11 o'clock. This is the final week of the holiday food drive. We'll be sorting and packing, well, not sorting as much as packing uh, food and preparing for pickup and delivery next Saturday. We could still use more uh, volunteers to help on Saturday uh, with the pickup and the delivery, uh, particularly for people to work here at the church, bringing the food out to people's cars, either to be then taken off and delivered or for people to take home. So if you'd like to do that, you can register online through the church website, um, or you can speak with me uh, after the service or call the church office this week. Thank you. Our greeter this morning is Lori Murphy. Flowers today are given by Tom and Wendy Glenn in loving memory of Wendy's dad, Richard Jehoda, who found peace and quiet in the arms of the Lord 23 years ago. He left us up, he left us all his love of life and wonderful sense of humor we miss more and more every day. We miss him more and more every day. We extend a special welcome to our guest organist this morning, Gail DeBoer. And there will be a fellowship hour available after the service, and this will be hosted by John and Sue Tiber. Please come and enjoy. Lord, the good news of Jesus arrives such joy to our world. Reach those who are lost and searching with this message of hope that we are through the Messiah. God, allow your message of peace to bring comfort to the anxious world. And we all go to the holiday season, but the message of great joy pierce through all the noise and all the people's hearts. Amen. Amen. May we have a moment of silence to prepare for worship.
rise in body or spirit and join in singing our opening hymn, O oh, for a Thousand Tongues to Sing. Please join me in the responsive call to worship found in your order of service. God has shown love among us by coming into the world in Christ. And all people in him. My friends, if God has so loved us, we also love one another. For if we love one another, God dwells in us. Let us worship the Holy One and speak prayer. Lighting of the candle of peace. Compass my soul, O God, center in the universe. Awake my sentence to the giver of a full. Open me to the preciousness of each moment as it unfolds in peace. Yes, compass my soul. Amen. You may be seated. Jesus taught us not to be anxious about our lives or about tomorrow. Are there worries or, and anxieties that pull our attention away from the joy of this season that cause us to feel separated from the peace which God, Christ promises? Let us turn now to God in prayer. Let us join together in the unison prayer of confession. O oh, holy God, our Advent waiting is a confession. We wait for a Messiah because the proud are still powerful, the mighty are still exalted, and hungry people stand unheard at the door. We wait for your incarnation in human form because we have not recognized you in our sister. We have not loved you in our brother we have not served you in our neighbor. In the stillness of the advent love and light, heal us and make us new through the good tidings of your presence in our lives. Amen. And let us pause for a moment of silent 
and personal confession. We do not wait for forgiveness. It is a promise kept for every day, a light shining in every darkness, the breath under any song of justice. We are forgiven. Hear and believe. And let us all say, thanks be to God. Let us continue in prayer, offering the words our Lord has given us to pray the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. Seven through fifteen. And she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger, because there was no place in the guest room. Now in that same region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flocks by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I'm bringing you good news for great joy for all of the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior, who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be a sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was, with an angel, a multitude of heavenly hosts praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth, peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that, that has taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. O oh Lord, we beg thee incline, incline thy ear to our prayers and enlighten the darkness of our minds. By grace of thy visitation, you, O oh God, will live and reign forever. Amen.
first lesson this morning is taken from the book of the prophet Isaiah, reading from the 35th chapter, beginning at the first verse. The wilderness and the dry land shall be glad. The desert shall rejoice and blossom. Like the crocus, it shall blossom abundantly and rejoice with joy and shouting. The glory of Lebanon shall be given to it, the majesty of Carmel and Sharon. They shall see the glory of the Lord, the majesty of our God. Strengthen the weak hands and make firm the feeble knees. Say to those who have a fearful heart, be strong, do not fear. Here is your God. He will come with vengeance, with terrible recompense. He will come and save you. Then the eyes of the blind shall be opened, and the ears of the deaf shall be opened. Then the lame shall leap like a deer, and the tongue of the speechless sing for joy. For water shall break forth in the wilderness, and streams in the desert. The burning sand shall become a pool, and the thirsty ground springs of water. The haunt of jackals shall become a swamp. The grass shall become reeds and marshes. A highway shall be there, and it shall be called the holy way. The unclean shall not travel on it, but it shall be for God's people. No traveler, not even fools, shall go astray. No lion shall be there nor shall any ravenous beast come up on it. They shall not be found there, but the redeemed shall walk there. And the ransomed of the Lord shall return and come to Zion with singing. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God.
The second lesson this morning is taken from the Gospel according to Luke, reading from the first chapter, beginning at the 46th verse. And Mary said, My soul magnifies the Lord, and my spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on the lowly state of his servant. Surely from now on all generations will call me blessed. For the Mighty One has done great things for me, and holy is his name. Indeed, his mercy is for those who fear him from generation to generation. He has shown strength with his arm. He has scattered the proud in the imagination of their hearts. He has brought down the powerful from their thrones and lifted up the lowly. He has filled the hungry with good things and sent the rich away empty. He has come to the aid of his child, Israel, in remembrance of his mercy. According to the promise he made to our ancestors, to Abraham and to his descendants forever. Here ends the reading. Thanks be to God.
Let us pray. Holy God, come near to us and help us in our waiting. Waiting is a challenge. Our attention quickly wanders. We think of things that are pressing us and pulling us elsewhere. We're distracted by all that is going on around us. Help us not to lose or let go of the story of the one for whom we wait, of the love that calls us here. Amen. The 13th century philosopher, theologian, and mystic Meister Eckhart says, we are all meant to be mothers of God. What good is it to me, he asks, if this eternal birth of the divine Son takes place unceasingly, but does not take place within myself? It's a fairly striking contrast of scripture passages or or maybe harmony of scripture passages this morning. First from the prophet Isaiah, a wonderful description of, of the experience of restoration, of the opportunity to return home after being taken away into exile. And underlying all of that, the promise of the dependable, steadfast, continuing love of God. The prophet talks about and describes in wonderful imagery the power of love and promise and return. Talks about crocuses blossoming. Talks about the heights drawing people's attention particularly in the early morning as the sun comes up. Talks about strength where before there had been weakness. Talks about taking away the occasion for fear. The prophet promises on behalf of God that eyes will be open, that ears will hear sharply, that legs will suddenly be strong, and song will break forth. There will be water in the wilderness, in the midst of the desert. And there will be a highway for the people of God to bring all of them closer to God. Everlasting joy shall be upon their heads, he proclaims. They shall obtain joy and gladness, and sorrow and sighing shall flee away. Isn't that a nice hope for Advent? That sorrow and sighing might flee away. Can you imagine that? Can you imagine waking up in the morning with no sorrow or sighing or worry about the list that's waiting for the rest of the day? Or what you might have forgotten from the day before? Or what the weather's going to be. Just joy. And singing. And sighing. Will flee, sighing and sorrow will flee away. Coupled with that is the passage that is so familiar to us. The words of Mary in response to the message the angel has come to bring her. 
It begins, as you know, with these words, my soul magnifies the Lord. Continues, my spirit rejoices in God, my Savior, for God has looked with favor on the lowly estate of God's servant. My soul magnifies the Lord. You have probably heard this read. I'm sure that you have heard these words sung. The Magnificat of Mary. Uh, it's, the words are so inspiring that they have been put to music by, by all kinds of classical composers. Now, the word magnify, for us, brings to mind the glasses that some of us have to put on when we're trying to read small print, or the lens that we get out when we have to read the instructions on something that are just too small to make out. But if you look in the dictionary, there's a whole list of meanings, and one of them that was popular more than 500 years ago was to extol or praise. So my soul magnifies the Lord means my soul praises the Lord. That's perhaps easier to imagine than trying to think about how exactly a soul would make the Lord my Savior larger. But I think that maybe that's what we should think about is making God and Jesus larger. Who is the great person of faith who said that the life of faith is all about making God and Jesus larger and oneself and one's own will smaller? It's interesting to know that the words that Mary speaks echo the words of another woman promised a child by God. Words that were spoken by Hannah probably a thousand years before Mary lived. They're, the words flow in a very similar way even though the women were not necessarily in the same situation. Hannah was married Mary was not. Hannah was desperate to have a child. She had come to the priest to pray and to offer an offering and to ask for a blessing that would result in having a child. Mary did not want to have a child. She was barely older than a child herself and not married. Mary, Hannah was relatively old, and Mary was a teenager. Hannah was the object of gossip because she hadn't been able to bear a child. And that reality in her life rippled out into the community and was the cause for comments made behind her back, idle talk around the well or at the edge of town. Mary was the target of gossip because she was pregnant and had no husband. Hannah had prayed for a son. Mary hadn't. Hannah asked for a son and she was given a son, Samuel, who would, be, who would bring salvation to her country, a nation which was in decline. Mary learned that her son would be called the Son of God. If you read the two passages, they echo one another in a very wonderful kind of way, going back and forth, saying pretty much the similar things about God 
and the rewards of faithfulness and the joy of being blessed in response to prayer from very different times and circumstances. So what might it mean for us to magnify the Lord in our lives? Well, the first thing might be to pay close attention to to think and consider, to remember and attend to just what it was that Jesus came to teach and to lead people in. Jesus wanted those who followed him to repent of their sin and turn their life in a different and new direction. He asked those who followed him to be servants. He was pretty tough on rich people and the ways in which wealth and accumulation could become a barrier to coming close to God. But he was, on the other hand, very concerned about those who were poor and powerless and sick and left behind, left at the edges of the community and the society. He didn't have a lot of patience with pompous religiosity. You know, the kind of faith that wants to be seen and recognized by other people. Jesus believed that prayer was vital. So just imagine weaving those teachings into your life, into the hours and the days between now and Christmas Eve. Prayer, a concern for those who are left out at the edges, who may not have enough to eat or a good place to live, who are served by those who ring bells or deliver food boxes or offer rides to medical appointments? What would it be like to to attend to the direction of our lives and try to make sure that we are truly and honestly moving in the direction we want to go. God wants us to go. Another way to magnify God is to offer God praise, to find prayers, psalms, scripture, songs that offer an opportunity just to give thanks and praise to God. So I mentioned these These words which we sort of read, maybe they don't sound quite as distinguished if we read them in English rather than in Latin. My soul magnifies the Lord. Magnificat anima mea dominum. But these words, as I said, have been put to glorious music. By composers that you're very familiar with, Bach and Pachelbel and Vivaldi and Mozart, Liszt and Mendelssohn, John Rutter, Marty Haugen, more contemporary. We have in church every week an opportunity to join the choir in singing and offering our praise, making that moment that we share in our worship service one of, of prayer and joy. And certainly one way to magnify the Lord is to make a modification in the way we live, the focus of our attention and the way in which we reach out to share with others. Jesus asked the disciples at one time after he had finished teaching and he had spoken a challenging word to the crowd and everybody watched as some of them turned and walked away. So Jesus turned to the disciples and said, do do you want to walk away also? And it was Peter who said, 
Jesus, to whom can we go? Where can we go? If we're not making Jesus the center of our focus and the destination toward which we live, then who else is there? Or what else? It becomes a little more compelling if we listen carefully to that quote from Meister Eckhart. And imagine that Mary's predicament is not only hers, but ours too. What if it's everyone's job to bear the Son of God and to bring to the world the message of love and hope and new life that will bring salvation, that will help all those crocuses to bloom and the water to appear in the wilderness and the joy to rise from lips in song. Listen to these words from the poet Anne Weems. Mary, Nazareth girl, what did you know of ethereal beings with messages from God? What did you know of men when you found yourself with child? What did you know of babies, you barely out of childhood yourself? God-chosen girl, what did you know of God that brought you to this stable, blessed among women? Could it be that you had already that you had been ready, waiting, listening for the footsteps of an angel? Could it be that there are messages for us if we have the faith to listen? Amen. Let me invite us to a time of prayer. So take a deep breath and turn your attention from listening to words to listening to your heart, to attending to the names and the hopes and the worries and the needs that you have brought with you to share in our time of prayer this morning. As we begin, we offer thanks for the beautiful flowers given by Tom and Wendy Glynn in loving memory of Wendy's dad, Richard Jehoda. Thanks for his love and guidance and his sense of humor. We want to lift up in our prayers those who are uh, mentioned in our order of worship, Ed Collett and Mabel Peterson, Stephen Simonson and Linda Shannon, Joyce Bolaño, Ellen Robert, Shirley Ryan, Marsha Folds and Marlene Bolaño. As we pray this morning, let us wish a happy birthday to Marilee Gladkowski today and in the coming week to Linda Silk, Carol Mitchell, and Cynthia Borma Campos. And let us also wish a happy wedding anniversary to Sally and Anthony Pilato. We want to offer prayers for those who are living with cancer or other chronic illness. And so we pray this morning for Elaine and Nolan, for Joseph and Janet and Roy and Chris, for Debbie and Misty and Marsha, for Maria and Jordan and her dad. We lift up prayers for Sarah Gladkowski and for Marilee, her mother. We pray for Karen and Annie and we pray that remission continues for Rich and for Jake. We lift up prayers for Carlene. I invite your prayers for Carol Mitchell and Tracy Weiss, who are home sick this morning. Mabel Peterson asks for prayers 
for the family of Ann Bliss, who passed away on Wednesday, December 7th, following complications with cancer and pneumonia. And so we give thanks for the precious life of Anne and ask God's comfort and strength for her family and friends. And Mabel also reports that her recovery from hip replacement is going slowly but surely. We also lift up others who are recovering from surgery. Mentioned earlier, Steve Simonson and Ed Collett and Linda Shannon. Barbara Massey wants to announce the arrival of Jackson de Cunha Massey, born on Thursday the 8th, about 1.37 in the afternoon, seven pounds. Beatrice and Jeff, mom and dad and brother Cole are doing well, and Barbara and Rick hope to head down to New Jersey tomorrow for a visit. And Meg Adams and Stella uh, send their greetings and their prayers. They're not able to be here today since... Uh, they don't have a ride, but they wanted to uh, let you know how much it means to them to be able to be here, whether it's in person or online. Let's begin our prayer in silence. Holy God, remind us that waiting is not wasted time. Remind us that good things come to those who wait, particularly through the promises that you offer. Help us to watch and pay attention for signs of the wonder of your presence. Signs of beauty, signs of joy, signs of wonder, for sounds of laughter and singing and energetic conversation. Meet us, O oh God, in our quiet times and help us to find peace and a bit of shelter from all that goes on around us so constantly and so quickly in a moment of quiet to turn our attention to you in the candlelight and offer our prayers and our thanks. We ask for healing and comfort for those we have named. We pray that your love and your strengthening presence will be felt by all who are lonely and isolated. We ask your blessing, your strength, and your renewal for those who are caring for loved ones or others who are caretakers, that they might find in the midst of the demanding work that they do, your presence and a strength and wisdom beyond their own. Be with us in our waiting. Help us to hold firmly and yet gently the promises which you offer. We pray in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen.
share and bring you a peace in your days with you into this week. May the peace of God and Jesus Christ be with you all. We join in singing our closing hymn, Jesus Christ is waiting for us. Number 117. God who leads by a star, show us the direction to, Babel, to Bethlehem. Lead us to the place where love is to be born into our lives. Give us signs along the road as we make our journey that we may follow in your way. May the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ, the love of God, and the deep peace of the Holy Spirit fill us and warm us on our journey. Amen. You may be seated. 